sometimes these vacuum lines have been on for a while, I try to rotate them. That way, if they're kind of stuck on, they'll come off. If they don't work by hand, you can always grab you a pair of needle nose pliers or something and work it. Once you get it up, you can go ahead and just pull up and kind of reposition it out of your way. Uh, we've also got another one that we'll be taking loose in a minute. It goes through brake booster. And we've got another one that runs down to the other valve cover. Now this hose right here leads from the intake to that back valve cover. We do have like a spring-loaded radiator hose clamp that we need to release. And that's what I'm just using. It's just a regular tool for that. And work it back. What we'll probably try to do is we'll try to work it off by hand if we can't. There we go. We got it. If not, like I said, we use some pliers. And we do have one more hose back here we need to get off that goes to the brake booster. Right here by the map sensor that we unplugged earlier, we got the vacuum line that goes from the intake over to the brake booster. So that's where your power, power brakes come from. We've got to take that hose off now. If it's been on there like anything else I've mentioned, you're going to have to try to rotate it. Get a pair of pliers if you need to. Try to do it by hand first. If you can't, grab something. They kind of seal themselves to the nipples on the intake and they kind of stay there for a while and never have a reason to come off till now so I broke it loose now I should be able to just work it back alright so we got that one off now we've got all the electrical connectors over here where the throttle body is all the vacuum lines all the uh, crankcase vent hoses now what we're working on is there's a bracket back here that we've got to take some uh, nuts off of alright the back side of this intake has a bracket to help keep it steady uh, stiffen everything up. You got a couple studs that stick through from the intake going out the bracket. You got a 10 millimeter nut here, 10 millimeter nut there. Now it attaches further down on another stud as well. But we've got the two tins up here we need to back off. I'm just going to be using a basic 10 millimeter ratchet wrench. You could probably just get away with a 10 millimeter ratchet if you want. I'll go ahead and take these all the way off. And then we'll move on to trying to loosen up the bottom of the bracket. All right, with those 10 millimeter nuts off, we got one that's off here and one for the back. We got one more bolt we need to back off down here. Now, the wiring harness is kind of in the way so you can't see what we're doing here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on getting that the harness off. Like I said, it's a 3.6. It's gonna have fasteners everywhere. And the harness right here actually slides on top. It's got a plastic holder that slides right down onto the bolt we're gonna be working on. So we need to pry that up as well start seeing some of it right here we gotta get up in there with something if we can't get it with this tool we'll use a pry bar if we need to use something else so be it like I said everything's attached one way or another so try to get whatever tool you can in there and get it off we've got it pulled off and out of the way now I can just kind of sit the harness back down a little further down and there you go that's the 13 millimeter studded bolt that we're gonna take off we're not going to take it actually all the way off. We're just going to loosen up. And once this bracket clears these studs, that's going to be more than enough. You can get in here with a 13 millimeter deep socket or a 13 millimeter ratchet wrench. So as I start loosening up this 13 millimeter studded nut, you finally start. You'll start seeing the bracket start giving. Bracket start moving. Like I said, I just I don't have to take it all the way off. I just need to loosen it enough so that I can grab the bracket and work it off the studs. If for some reason it doesn't clear enough and you're concerned about it and you think I want to have as much room as possible, you can go ahead and take it all the way off. I'm gonna go ahead and take it off just right now to show you that there's not much to it. Alright, here we go. Step to the side. Grab the bracket, just let it hang there. You got a wiring harness attached to it, it's not going anywhere. Now, the back side of the intake is clear, so when we pick it up, we can go up and out. Now, looking at the front of the intake, at the front of the vehicle, you've got your upper radiator hose. Now, there's two metal studs that stick through, they got two 10 millimeter nuts one here, one there. These are the brackets that we're not going to bother with, but we will have to take the two nuts off. We'll go ahead and back those out and then we'll go ahead and work on getting to the center portion. Now to help us, what we need to do is go ahead and release that little plastic holder here. It keeps the radiator hose attached and routed properly. Once we open it up, we can pull the radiator hose out, sit it up a little bit higher, 
and we'll have access to our 10 millimeters. So the hose picked up, you can actually see that 10 millimeter nut easily. The other one's just a little further back. Let's say we just back it off, that 10 millimeter ratchet wrench. Just back it off enough to get to it by hand. Take it the rest of the way. Like I said, we got to do the one further back. Here's one we just took off. Here's one we need to get to. It's down in there just a little bit, but nothing too difficult. Nothing that you can't get your ratchet wrench on. And once you've got it loosened that way, you can do it by hand the rest of the way. Well, you don't drop it, you keep the fingertips on it. Now the way the intake is attached to the engine is with a combination of bolts down the center of it. And you got brackets on both sides. Uh, there are studs that come out of the intake with nuts. And I just showed you how to take two of them off. You can take all the nuts off you want, bolts down the center. Unfortunately, because the studs go through the brackets, you're not lifting the intake directly up. So what we've got to do is we need to take one set of brackets and loosen it and reposition it. You can work on doing the front if you want, but there's a couple more. There's actually a total of two brackets there. They're identical and they, it's a little harder to get to the fasteners. I like to use one on the back that I just showed you. We're going to get to the lower bolt. And once we do, we actually should be able to pull that bracket back enough to reposition it. And we can grab that intake, we can pick it up, clear it, and come up. That way we don't have to mess with the front brackets. We just mess with one set, which is that single one in the rear. Now the upper intake mounts to the lower intake using a set of bolts going right down the center now. There's a total of seven of them. There are eight millimeters. I like to use an eight millimeter quarter inch drive because some of the access holes start getting narrower and narrower as you go back. But you need to get to them and start backing them off one at a time. Like I said, we've got a total of seven of them working their way down. One little thing I recommend, let me back this down in here so you see. Once I back off on that bolt, it comes unthreaded from the lower intake. It's loose, we know it's backed out. Now, if I leave all of them the same way, when I go to pick up this intake, I'm gonna have seven bolts wanna drop down and they're gonna kinda get in the way, they're gonna stick down in crevices, I don't want them to. To help me get it off easy, or better yet, even go back on easier, I recommend backing out even more. Go to where it starts unthreading from the upper intake. You start seeing some threads, it's got something to hold to, now they're not gonna wanna drop. And when you start working your way back, it might be harder to grab a hold of the ones that's down in here. But at least we won't be fighting with seven of them. We might only be fighting with two or three. But that's a little thing, a little tip there to help you. Alright, so after all that work, getting all the bolts, fastener, hoses, connectors off, now we're up to this point. We've got it, and like I said, when we pick up, we're going to pick up, go back slightly, clear the studs on the front, and then come out with it. There we go. Nothing else is fastened. We can pick up the intake and gently sit somewhere off to the side. So this is like I was showing you, once I back the studs out or the bolts, they clear, I don't have to fight with it. Of course, these are the ones that I couldn't get to. And like I said, when you try to line things up, you've got all these sticking down, they're going into the ports on the intake. You want to get as clean an install as possible. It at least helps to get some of these out of the way so you're not fighting with all seven. And you got a foam sound ending item right here you need to pick up on and set it to the side. Make sure you put it back on when you get done. Now we got access to all three coils. Uh, of course, this is number two. It's towards the front of the engine. Uh, it's the left side, so that's two, four, and six. I'll go ahead and back off on the 10 millimeter here that holds number two down and release the connector. Bolt's been taken off. Just pick it straight up. Make sure I disconnect this one. There we go. That's your coil. It's got a long boot on it. The spring contact inside. There you go. Now we want to remove the lower air filter housing assembly. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the air filter out. Now the main portion of the air filter assembly just snaps down. A little plastic stud going into rubber bushings. We do have a power steering bottle we need to take off. It's got a 13 millimeter nut. We'll take that off. We can pick the bottle up, sit it to the side, and then we can work on getting it loose and popping it up. And we also got to keep in mind we got a couple of wire and fasteners that do attach to the air filter box on the bottom half that we've got to take loose as well.